With many colleges and universities switching from written aptitude exams to online interviews, this is a perfect time for you to learn what to say. College interview questions and how to answer them, that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there, thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If this is the first video that you're watching from my channel, I make educational and motivational content. So if you don't want to miss any of my new uploads, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon. Now this video right here is part of our study hacks series. Um, pero meron din siyang kaunting undertone ng get hired series natin just because it's the same thing, which is preparing for an interview. However, ilalagay natin sa tamang context, which is Kids, students who are trying to get into a high school, university, or college of their choice. Because of the pandemic, a lot of the colleges and universities opt to have you write something, like a personal essay. Plus, on top of that, lalagyan nila ng interview aspect. So they can decide whether you can enter their university or not. And a lot of you have been asking me for my own tips when it comes to your college interview. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, just a quick little plug. If you want to help support this channel and our cause to democratize education in the Philippines, one way for you to do that is through buying our merch. You can visit shop.teamlaika.com to see yung ating mga designs na shirts, hoodies, mugs, and other things that I designed for this team and uh, sa lahat ng mga bibili na, maraming salamat sa inyo. So mga bibili pa lang, maraming salamat din. And if you can't afford to buy one right now, that's okay. Again, we are just so thankful dun sa mga sumusupport sa channel nito so we can keep making free content like this for you. Alright? Now, mag-dive na tayo into this conversation. Now, ano ba yung pwede nating i-anticipate? Uh, a lot of kids struggle with uh, talking about themselves. Okay? Simply because a lot of us are still discovering parts about ourselves. We're still trying to build towards the person that you want to become. But it's very important for you when preparing for college interview questions or high school interview questions to know yourself. Kasi doon naman talaga iikot yung conversation. I remember uh, my youngest sister, ang tinanong yata sa kanya dun sa Quezon City Science High School interview niya naman was kung sino yung favorite cartoon character niya. Again, taking into context na grade school kasi uh, graduate yung mga pumapasok sa science high school. So medyo mas pambata yung tanong. Uh, I remember when I was asked then uh, nung, nung grade 6 nga, again, incoming uh, freshman kami sa Quezon City Science High School, kung um, ano yung ibig sabihin sa akin ng excellence. Which is, again, ano na yun, medyo nasa kabilang side naman. So again, may mga range din ng mga questions na pwedeng itanong sa inyo. But ang ipinaka-important skill dito is you being comfortable to speak candidly and to speak your own truth. Yung talagang totoo sa inyo. Kasi interviewers can see right through you if you fake your answers. So again, halo to ng again, intelligence nyo, ng inyong public speaking skills, ng inyong ability to rein in yung inyong anxiety or yung inyong nervous para makapag-perform ka well. So how do you prepare for it? I have a few steps na i-recommend ko sa inyo. Now, the first step is this. You really have to do yung inyong self-inventory. Okay. Now, ano tong self-inventory na to? Again, pushing yung fact na ang itatanong sa inyo is all about you, you really have to know yourself. Doon tala nagsisimula yan. So what I would ask you to do would be this. I want you to list down all of your strengths and all of your weaknesses. Just take stock of those. Okay, now, ano ibig sabihin nun? Ilagay niyo yung sarili ninyo sa paa or sa shoes ng isang person who uh, will be interviewing you. Like ako, kung third person to, ano ba yung makikita ko na itong si Laika, ano ba yung kanyang strengths and ano yung kanyang weaknesses? And then, ilista niyo yun lahat. Okay? Uh, you have to have that list handy kasi para pag tinanong kayo kung ano yung kwento ninyo or kung sino kayo, alam niyo yung pag-uusapan. Okay? So again, you have to uh, create yung inyong self-inventory of your strengths and weaknesses. Now, the next question would be, what do I do with that inventory? Now, I want you to list all of the positives. Now, a few of the examples would be, how are your grades? If maganda yung grades ninyo. Meron ba kayong awards? Okay? Now, hindi lang basta uh, grades-based na awards yan, ha? Kahit kung may leadership award ka, kung part ka ng organizations like the Girl Scout of the Philippines or Red Cross or anything like that. All of your extracurriculars, isama nyo yun. Um, look at your skills then. If you have any skills that you learned outside of school, 
di ba? I taught myself how to edit videos. I taught myself how to take beautiful photos. Some of them are here. If you have any hobby na nag-invest ka ng time, that can also be a good way to go when it comes to introducing yourself. You can also look at volunteer work. Okay, and this is actually very helpful. A lot of people think na hindi siya nagmamatter. But if you look at your background, if at any point nag-volunteer ka sa church ninyo, as part of the band, or nagturo ka sa Sunday school, or po sumasama sa mga outreach programs, these things can actually be a plus for you when it comes to your college interview. Okay? Now, so weaknesses naman, I don't want you to think of weaknesses as parang a nail sa inyong coffin, as in, yun na yung end ng lahat. But instead, look at them as things that you need to improve on. Uh, so if you say na I'm not too strong when it comes to speaking in public, and that is why this is a bit of a challenge for me, you can talk about that. If you ha struggle with, uh, say, um, procrastination, diba? Uh, you can say that you are still building towards that. So again, find a way to turn this list of random weaknesses into something that you can improve upon. Yun din yung same technique na sinasabi ko sa mga uh, people who are asking me for advice sa job application. Like, you really have to frame it na I'm taking steps towards improving myself sa aspects na ito. So they don't stay as weaknesses. Okay? So again, now that you have a be parang better feel na dun sa list ko ng pros and cons, basically, if, if pipiliin nila ako for that college, now, it's time for you to translate those into words, okay? So again, kapag tapos ka na sa self-inventor mo, step number two, you have to really prepare your answers, okay? Now, depende na rin talaga yan, and again, depende na sa self-awareness ninyo, if you are the type of person who just needs a basic outline, or if you really want to write everything down, uh, as in, in essay format, and then just memorize those things, uh, hindi ako strict when it comes to that. Simply because I know that there are people who can perform well in school but just have this huge hurdle ng pagsasalita in public. Uh, meron talaga mga tao who are disciplined, who are really good, who, pupils who are really disciplined and, and ano self-motivated naman din talaga sila. They have the right attitude, the right motivation, pero uh, yun lang. Talagang anxious na sila kapag nagsasalita sa interview. So if you would need time para mag-answer yun ng questions sa to in essay format and memorize them, hindi ko ididing yun sa inyo. Okay? And usually the interviewer wouldn't recognize that naman. Okay? Now, medyo baka yung iba sa inyo medyo controversial yung sinabi ko na yun. Kasi sasabihin ng iba, eh di hindi na accurate yun kasi minemorize niya naman yung sagot niya. But again, I've seen this happen so many times. I mean, we talk about aptitude exams, or in this case, an interview to check your aptitude for that college or university. Ang ibig sabihin lang naman na aptitude is that if you have uh, the right amount ng skills, discipline, attitude, na sakto, or you're apt, ibig sabihin, swak ka, or nag-fit ka dun sa criteria that they need for their college. And ano ba talaga ang purpose ng aptitude exams or ng interview na ito? Ang purpose niya is for them to get the students who will thrive in their college. That is the purpose. Hindi to keep certain people from the university. It's just finding the right type of people for that college or university. And why is it important? Actually, important yun para sa kanila so that they would not, sabi na natin, use up resources that could be used for another person. Pero important rin yun for you. Kasi, honestly, kung hindi ka naman pala talaga mag-thrive dun sa college or university na yun, or sa place na yun, or even sa job na yun, Di ba mas maganda na lang na ma-reject na tayo sa simula pa lang so we can find a place that is a better fit for us. So think about it that way when you're preparing your answers. Okay? That is the goal ng attitude exams or ng interviews for you to check kung kayo ay pasok dun sa criteria na hinahanap nila. Okay. Now what are the common and yung mga bagay na pwede nyo nang i-expect na itatanong sa inyo? Now, right off the bat, usually it starts off with a quick introduction. So they will say, introduce yourself. Now, a lot of people are surprised still na tinatanong sila to introduce themselves. When in fact, di ba yun naman ang point ng interview na ito? Whether you are trying to get hired or whether, whether you're trying to get into a college or university or school, ipapaintroduce talaga nila yung sarili, yung sarili ninyo sa kanila. Kasi they want to get to know you. Again, the interview revolves around who you are. So if you haven't written your self-introduction speech yet, I know it's part of the curriculum, I think, for K-12, 
um, you better start writing now. Magsimula na kayo to draft your own self-introduction speech. Now, I will create a separate video about this na lang. Pero yung aking quick format about self-introduction speeches, which I uh, also posted on TikTok, is this. It's you talking about this. Blank, your name is a blank. Something that you do, something that you're interested in. Sino ka ba? Who wants to blank? Which now becomes your goal. So for example, sa akin, I'm Laika. Laika is an educational content creator who wants to democratize access to education here in the Philippines. So that is my one-liner na self-introduction speech. And when I actually craft my speech, I, all I do is to break those down into smaller pieces, add a bit of uh, parang context or an anecdote here and there. Pero dun na um, nagre-revolve yung speech ko. It's very important that you don't just talk about who you are, you talk about what you want to be or what you want to do. Ano ba yung goal ninyo or purpose ninyo? Now, in your case, if this is going to be a self introduction speech for a college entrance interview, sabihin na natin, of course, that goal would probably be to enter that university or to finish dun sa degree na pinili ninyo dun sa college nila. So, for example, Hi, my name is Laika. I am an aspiring writer, for example, who wants to be part of a prestigious writing program like the one that you have in this university. Or Laika is an aspiring mathematician who wants to learn from the bests, some of which are in your program. So I want to be here. So again, there's always that parang arc para pag nagsisalita ka, mas malinaw sa kanila kung ano yung purpose ninyo dun sa college na yun. Okay? Now again, I'm just saying na i-optimize natin yung speech, pero I'm not telling you to lie. So if hindi nyo talaga intention to be in that college or university, just find a good twist about it. You don't need to lie. Like, um, you don't need to sound desperate to be there if you aren't. Just say that you're interested. Okay? Kasi may mga ganun eh, parang yun, yun yung mahirap. Uh, the moment that you um, feel compelled na magpander or mag grovel or basta basically magkakuha ng favor from the person that is interviewing you. Medyo delikado kasi yun kasi even if sometimes, di ba, feeling natin, oh, mas maganda kung sisipsip ako dun sa, dun sa interviewer. Pero most savvy interviewers, lalo na kung sila yung dean ng program na yon can see right through you. So just be honest. Mas maganda pa yon Okay? Now, the next thing that you have to prepare would be yung answer ninyo kung tinanong kayo ng why do you want to be here. Kasi syempre, kung napakarami naman colleges at universities sa Pilipinas, why do you want to get into this specific school? This is something that was asked din sa akin uh, when I went into Say Messiah College. Kasi the idea there was that, di ba nag-UP ka? Di ba nasa Phoebius ka na? Kasi I finished the, the basic Bible course. Usually, when people go into Phoebius College of Bible, which, which is one of the biggest and most prestigious din, uh, seminaries here in the Philippines or Bible schools here in the Philippines, after ng BBC, they, they stay. Most people stay uh, sa Phoebius College of, uh, of Bible and ju just finish kung ano yung mga programs na nandoon. But my reasoning kung bakit kung gusto pumasok sa Messiah College at the time was, the course that I really wanted, which is psychology, wasn't something that was offered in Phoebus College of Bible. Ang options lang kasi at that time, okay, were either Christian Ministries, which is, was a very new course at that time, um, missions, or Christian education. And again, nasabi ko na to multiple times, I didn't want to be a teacher. I just really wanted to study psychology, so I went into Messiah College. So that was my story and my process kung bakit ako nag-decide to try to get into that college. Now again, it's going to be the same thing for you kung saan mang college or university ka papasok. Ano yung decision-making process ninyo? How did you get to that decision to apply for that college or university? This is where you get to be honest. If you are applying for a state university in your own province, just tell them, di ba? I am, taal po ako sa Batangas. Or, um, I, I've been here my entire life. I was born here. I was raised here. My um, older sisters and brothers went to this college and I've seen how they've grown, how they thrived, and how they excel in their own fields. That is why I, ha I want to get the same level of education from this institution. So think of a way na kung explain niyo kung ano talaga yung decision making process niyo. Now, some of you may say, eh paano po yun kung nag-apply lang ako kasi safety school ko to. 
well, you can just say that you're interested in joining their program. Pero huwag niyo na naman sabihin na fallback plan ko po to kasi kung hindi ako papasok sa UP, dito po ako mag-aaral. Parang hindi talaga maganda sabihin yon. Just tell them that you're you're interested, okay? Now, of course, after you talked about your decision-making process kung bakit gusto nyo makapasok sa college or university na yon, ang logical na next question would be why this degree or why this course? Bakit gusto nyo mag-psychology, nursing, architecture, or any course na pinili ninyo? Now, I would say this up front, and baka maunahan kasi ako sa comment section, may mga students who were brutally honest with their response. As in, I've had stories of people saying na, kasi po, my tita is, so, is the one sending me to school, and she wants me to take up nursing, and that is why I'm here. You can be honest with that, with your response, and people will understand that. Pero again, depende rin yan sa case, so you really have to read the room, or look at yung person interviewing you. Okay? Makapapansin nyo naman din sa body language nila and the way that they speak if they are interested or sold na sa inyo or if hindi pa masyado. So again, just uh, use your tact, use your wisdom. Talaga makiramdam din kayo when you're framing your responses. But again, you don't have to lie. So you can say na again, this is the closest college or university in my area. I have to take care of my elderly grandparents, so I have to be able to travel back and forth in a short period of time. And that is why I really want to go into this college. And because this is the degree that's available that's closest to my passions and my interests, this is the one that I'm choosing. You can say it that way naman. And again, it's honest, and it still sounds right. Okay, so again, you have to have a ready response why you want to take one why you want to take up that course or why you want to finish that degree. Now, another bonus tip would be this: if you can have access to say a list of successful alumni, nung college na yon with that same degree, mas maganda. Um, if you can look through yung mga famous na alumni nila na you look up to and mention them. Okay, kung sabihin niyo, for example, na, again, this is just an example, no? Um, kunyari lang, okay? <laughs> if you're trying to get into Misaya College, um, I I love watching Coach Laika's videos, and I heard that she came from this college, and I wanted to have the same training that she got. And I wanted to be out there in the marketplace influencing people positively, as she does, so I want to take up psychology here in Messiah College. So again, you can frame it that way. Tapos maganda pa kasi sasabi nung nag-interview sa'yo parang, oy, nag-research tong bata na to. So sige, pagbigyan natin. Okay, so again, you have to prepare yung answer nyo doon. Now, the fourth question na probably tatanong sa inyo, lalo na these days, would be this. How did you adjust to online learning? My crickets. <laughs> okay? Now, bakit? Kasi syempre, hindi naman natin nakikita in, na biglang babalik lahat to how it was before. So, very important talaga na tingnan ngayon yung inyong adaptability sa situation. And I'm telling you that this is a possible question simply because kung ako yung mag-interview uh, din ng college students ngayon, itatanong ko ito. Not because I want to weed out yung people who are having a hard time with online learning, but because alam ko na a huge part of college life is adjusting to things. It's adapting to curveballs na thrown your way. It's you being able to see, na, okay, it's, this situation is far from ideal, but I will do my best to survive or thrive in this situation. So probably itatanong din to sa inyo. So pag tinanong kayo, how do you adapt to online learning? Just respond honestly then. You can say na I struggled um, during the first few weeks or few months. But now, I'm, try I'm actually getting the hang of it. I'm doing better now. Uh, I learned a lot of things along the way. You can tell them about that. It taught you how to be self-motivated. It taught you how to be self-disciplined. It actually gave you a better insight into what happens behind the scenes. It taught you empathy. It gave you more time to explore your hobbies, which you now turned into side hustles, or these hobbies that turned into marketable skills that you are now banking on. These are things that you can still explain pagdating sa interview. Okay? So again, yun yung probably four questions na malamang itatanong sa inyo. So ihanda nyo na yung sadili ninyo. Now, of course, if they give you a list of possible questions, mas maganda rin if... if you should check it out. Like, how do you define success? Usually, people ask that. Or, uh, to you, what what 
does education mean for you or something like that or what how do you deal with difficult people these are just simple questions that you can prepare for then now I know it's not swak na swak sa context, but, but I have a full playlist sa Get Hired podcast natin where I talked about common job interview questions. Now, I know job interview questions siya, but usually people borrow these questions then for interviews, lalo sa aptitude exams, like rate yourself from 1 to 10, right? And uh, if you have time, go and check those out because I think those will also help you prepare for the interview. I already had students na nag apply for scholarships in different organizations from uh, two years ago, three years ago, from last year, who used the playlist and nakapasa naman sila. So that may help. You can check it out. The link will also be right here. Okay? Now, your third step kasi inyo, after you've done your self-inventory and after you've prepared your answers, whether outline yan or script would be this. You have to really practice speaking okay because it's one thing to know it in your head and it's another thing to actually translate it into words i would encourage you to do mock interviews with your classmates or with your close friends i encourage you to um, really go and reach out to other people right now uh, especially if it require you to speak in english in the interview which some colleges or universities do Make sure that you log yung practice time ninyo speaking in English uh, para mas maging ready kayo for your interview. Now, some people would tell me na naman, na preempt ko na kayo sa comments na parang bakit ganun? Dapat hindi naman required yung English. Well, I actually agree, you know, pero until the time that we manage to change the system, this is how things are. And sa akin, I cannot in good conscience tell you na dapat ganito, dapat ganyan. Instead, ang sasabihin ko sa inyo would be to prepare and do your best just to make sure that your opportunities are broader and you have a better shot at passing that interview. So I really want you to practice. Uh, kung wala kayong practice partner, kahit sa salamin na lang, kahit i-record nyo lang yung sarili ninyo, I really encourage you na if you could, lalo na kung may phone naman kayo, and I guess meron kasi you're watching this, or sa laptop ninyo kung may webcam kayo, just sit in front of your camera and start speaking. Kasi kahit na camera lang siya at hindi siya tao, it will train you to focus on what you're saying instead of the distractions around you. Kasi sa totoo lang, ang hirap talaga magsalita kapag may nanonood. Ang, sal- ang hirap magsalita kapag may camera kang tinitingnan. And it took me years before I got to this point and hanggang ngayon nagsistutter pa rin ako or nagsistumble pa rin ako here and there. So I really encourage you to put in the hours para masanay kayo. So again, that would be yung third tip natin. You have to really practice speaking. Now, the fourth tip is this. You have to relax. Um, and you know, ang relaxation, it also takes practice. Pero you have to do it kasi kapag sobra kayo ninenervyos dun sa exam, uh, mas mahihirapan kayo. I have a few videos na rin on public speaking tips and uh, on how to uh, work with your anxiety. If you haven't seen those, ililink ko na lang din dito at saka sa description box sa baba. You can start with those. Um, ako, I have my little things that I do. Okay, one of those is that I wear a leather jacket when I feel extra anxious for the day. Um, another thing is I have my own hand gestures. This is one of the odd tips that I could give you. Because a lot of people, they don't know what to do with their hands when they're speaking. Ako, I like talking with my hands. But when I'm extra nervous or extra anxious, I fold my hands together like this. Sometimes I squeeze my knees. When I'm speaking, just so I can stay grounded. Okay, bago ako mag-spin out of control in my own thoughts and anxiety and nervousness. Kasi usually, di ba, pag nervous, nag-shake your hands, nag-shake yung, nag-ganan yung knees. Please don't do that. Kasi it will make you seem even more nervous than you actually are. So, kung, ayaw, kung medyo kailangan ninyong i-let out yung nervous energy ninyo, you can do those quick fixes. Again, you can do this. Qu- squeeze your hands, squeeze your knees. Uh, just do something to keep you grounded and that could help you alleviate yung inyong stress and anxiety dun sa speaking na yon. Okay? So again, relax. Don't forget to breathe. These are things that you can learn and these are things that you can improve on. So kung uh, malakas lakas yung loob ninyo, here's another tip that I could give you. I want you to list common uh, questions na pwedeng iba to sa inyo. Like, yun, introduce yourself. Why do you want to be here? Why did you choose this degree or program? Maglagay kayo ng ganun sa cards. Okay? And pamigay nyo sa mga tao sa pamilya ninyo. Tapos, random, have them randomly check you within the day. 
So kung kunwari pumasok ka sa kitchen, tapos nakasalubo mo yung kapatid mo or yung nanay mo, tapos sasabihin niya sa'yo, introduce yourself. Yung random na ganun, tapos biglang kailangan mong introduce yung sarili mo. Like if you can get your entire family uh, doing this as an activity, that would be really helpful. Kasi kapag kumaga unready ka dun sa isang question na ibabato sa'yo, tapos na pull off mo yon kapag ina-anticipate nyo na yung, yung interview ninyo, mas confident ka na. Kasi kinaya ko nga nung bigla akong ginulat dito sa tanong na to eh. So ngayon, mas prepared na ako. Okay? And if any of you try that out, let me know. I would love to see it. Kahit sa TikTok lang, shoot a video of your your parent randomly asking you a college interview question and you randomly answering. I would love to see how you deal with those situations. Isa yan sa mga master tips na I can give you. And I have students asking me for advice sa job interview, asking me for advice sa IELTS speaking test. Isa yan sa mga sinasabi ko sa kanila. Like, ilist nyo yung mga possible questions, ibigay nyo sa mga kamag-anak ninyo sa bahay, tapos have them randomly drill you. And that can really help you when it comes to confidence. Okay? So yan, binigay ko sa inyo isa sa mga favorite kong exercises. I hope you try it out. Tag me na lang at Laika Maravilla or at Team Laika on TikTok if you want me to see those or if ipopost nyo siya sa, sa Facebook or anything, just tag me para makita ako. I would love to see it talaga. Alright, so i-run down lang natin yung list natin. Number one, do a self-inventory. Positives, negatives, strengths, and weaknesses. Actually, hindi weaknesses. We call them potential kasi pwede pa siyang baguhin. Number two, you have to prepare yung mga answers nyo to certain questions. Whether you're going to write an outline or an actual script that you're going to memorize, do it. Okay, number three, you have to practice speaking. Okay, again, it's one thing to write and it's another thing to speak. It's a different skill, so you really have to practice. And then number four, you have to relax. Okay, find ways that would help you stay grounded, help you relax, see where your, your hands go, see where your feet go. Kapag nagsasalita kayo, focus on your breathing, okay, and you should be good to go. Now again, when it comes to aptitude exams or aptitude uh, processes when it comes to you finding the right college for you. Ito, iiwanan ko kayo with this. Sometimes, the, a closed door is the best thing that could happen to you. Okay, I'll just let that sink in for a bit. Okay, closed doors can help you find a clearer path towards where you were supposed to be. That is how I think about things. Kasi isa sa mga pinakamahihirap na desisyon is choosing where to go kung bukas lahat ng opportunities sa'yo. In that case, parang syempre mag, mag, mapapaisip ka, mag, magdo-double take ka eh. Parang tama ba na dito ako? Pero gusto ko rin dito. Minsan mas mahirap na problema yon. So, I don't want you to look at possible rejections as, ah, hindi, siguro kasi mahina ako, weak ako, or bobo ako. Yung iba ganun pa mag-isip. I really hate that word. Don't think of it that way. It's just a closed door that would lead you to where you're supposed to be. Okay? So again, it's just an exam. It's just an interview. Do your very best to prepare so you can do your very best at the, at the day of the interview para mas mataas yung odds ninyo. And if things don't work out, at least you know you did your part. Okay? And uh, if you want more study hacks videos, there will be a link right here then sa iButton if you're watching on YouTube. A link in the description box then if you want to watch those. We have a lot of videos already. How to write an essay, how to read your readings, and stuff like that. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit that bell icon. We have more discussions coming up. And if you want to reach out to me directly, get the reviewers that I made, including the college entrance test booklet that I wrote with two of my friends. One of them is a professor sa UPLB. Um, she covered yung English section. And si Stanley naman, a really good friend of mine. Actually, parang kapatid ko na talaga siya. Kapatid ko na siya eh. He's, he's basically my brother from another mother. He wrote naman the science section. You can uh, find those sa www.facebook.com slash teamlaika. Alright? Thanks guys for watching. As we always say sa channel to, never stop learning. Adja, adja, kaya See you in the next video and bye for now. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you for sticking around until the end. If you want more, go ahead and click on this to watch a new video. And dito naman sa baba, to subscribe to my second channel, yung aking vlogging channel, to get to know me better. See you soon.